stuff. But, uh, but yeah, I feel like when you grow up, you realize that everything is super subjective. And within each department of life, generally you can find the, the hidden gems, even if it's not your jam. The cell phone, the thing you got really into a while ago was modernized old gen genres like electro pop, electric house, modernized jazz stuff. I do, yeah, I like all that stuff as well. Kendrick Lamar is actually a very good lyricist. I really like Kendrick. I mean, I haven't listened to their full discography, I wouldn't say, but I grew up listening to a lot of Kendrick, of the Lamar variety, not the Anna variety. Uh, a little bit of the Anna variety. She's a great actress, good for her. Great voice too, for sure, can't say that. But same with, yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus. You're having a brain fart, can't remember his name. Didn't even write the song, he just was paid millions of dollars to sing it. Is that like one of his songs or are we talking Old Town Road or something in that vein? But Lady Gaga was a shockingly great jazz singer too, made you wonder what other genres she could rock. I'm pretty sure Lady Gaga could rock pretty much any genre. She has, she's one of those people that has a lot of versatility in her voice. And I think it helps because a lot of the time, uh, power is where people struggle, right? Like you can kind of teach yourself or not even yourself, but you can be taught a lot of like, you can expand your vocal range. You can get a lot of technical singing skills. But when you have that, like that power just generated in anything you say, it's good stuff. But boss, you're at the point that the hidden gems, if you actually give a good listen, spend part of your day to understand their side, it's actually pretty good. Sell it stuff, repeats chorus every 30 seconds because it doesn't know how to fill a song. I fill three minutes with different words. That's kind of boring for you. Fair enough. And Lady Gaga was straight up an inspiration for me. Definitely. They have a, I don't care what you think about me, which gives them the agency to, to do what she wants. She wasn't limited by fear. Yeah, no, and, and obviously in all kind of, has jumped around genres quite a bit actually Lady Gaga not just in their musical career but in her uh like acting for you know The Shallows which I didn't actually watch but I loved the soundtrack to again I'm kind of a sucker I like most music at the end of the day I'm a pretty easygoing person I like most things pretty innately you know take that with a grain of salt there's obviously tons of garbage out there that I personally don't enjoy and you know so I even hesitate Labeling it as bunch of garbage is probably a discredit to, you know, not only the people that put work into doing it, but the people who enjoy that type of thing. Uh, not for me, though, I would definitely say. Um, and yeah, besides that, I don't know where the sentence is going. So I'll keep talking as if uh, there's a like cohesive through line through the whole thing. But if you really pay attention to the details of what I'm saying, you'll notice that uh, none of it actually really means anything. I'm not really like saying anything meaningful. I'm just spouting words and, uh, and sounds and you're receiving those. And so this is where we're left off. And I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> oh man, you like some garbage because you got drunk one time and the memory is attached. That's also fair enough. I feel like what I've noticed lately with a lot of things is specifically in music let's focus on music there are songs that i listen to and i'm like i don't really like this i don't think i i'm enjoying this right now but if i listen to it 10 times end of the 10th time i'm like crap i kind of like this now that's happened with a couple of my partner's artists who who just weren't my jam they were great you know talented musicians incredible uh, performers but just not what I'd usually listen to. So I didn't hate it, didn't dislike it even, I wouldn't say, but just wasn't quite like my go-to, I'm gonna listen to this all the time. But uh, but then I started listening to them more often. It kind of came randomly. I think they were suggested on a bunch of like Spotify playlists and they also came up on the radio a lot as I was driving around for a decent amount for a couple months. And by the end of it, I was like, crap, I like this potentially even more than my partner now. And now I have to be the one that eats crow and has to uh, say, okay, uh, you were 100% right. I discredited it on the first couple of listens, but sometimes you just gotta, you gotta give credit where it's due. You do in fact have to hand it to them. But yeah, you gave me an also if your best friend is constantly high energy, good mood to, uh, to sing for sure. Rubs off on you in a good vibe style, exactly. Your best source of new music is stealing your friend's playlist they personally curated. That is a summation of my musical tastes uh, until 
the age of like 26. Maybe a bit earlier than that because I think I, I was largely spending a lot of time alone uh, when in like uni and stuff. But growing up, that is the that is the source of really anything. Pop culture, music, movies, books. Just steal all the good ones from people. Especially if you have friends that you know, like, oh, this friend is uh, is really musically inclined. They're great at finding these like hidden gems, finding these little groups. Then I trust their word at anything and I'll try out anything they suggest. And then, you know, I have my book friend, my movie friend, my, my pop, pop culture friend, my meme friend, and so on and so forth. And why ever do the work when you can just ransack it from others? Hell yeah. Uh, which, you know, again, I say in a tongue-in-cheek way into a logical extreme, but it is very true of me growing up. I definitely just took everything from everyone else and and loved the ever-living crap out of it. Had a good life. Still having a good life. Hope to continue having a good life, but we'll see how it goes. The age of passing around mixtapes. Yeah. In fact, not even my own mixtapes. There was a mixtape that one of my older sister's crushes made for her. She loved it and listened to it a lot. But I also got that uh, that tape, and it was an actual tape. We were already in the age of like, I think iPod Nano had probably just come out. But for whatever reason, we were still using this little cassette player. And I, I loved that uh, mixtape, I think made up a lot of the backbone of my musical interests as a young, uh, as a young teen. But everything in games for sure, and I mean, that's what you're all here for. I'm just secretly taking advantage of all of you to give me recommendations for all of these things and everything, actually. You know, I explicitly mention it when it's something like a silly pun name for the game. I'll give you credit for that. Everything else, though, I'm going to pretend that I did that myself. So, hell yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you'd recommend David Maxim McKick. All he does is progressive guitar. I'll at least try it out for sure. Now it's it's go on Spotify or Deezer or whatever and get what it suggests, which is an algorithm probably, at least partially motivated by promotional deals. Unfortunately so, but at the end of the day, if I'm finding music that that hits my smooth spots and gets me jamming, you can take all your promotional algorithmic happy crappy and do whatever you want with it. I listen to a song I like. Unfortunately, I think the real losers there are not me, the consumer, but it's the, you know, the artists that aren't found. I mean, all of this is an analogy for my, my budding career on Twitch when I was hopeful and had stars in my eyes about the future. But the only reason I'm not big is because of the algorithm. I take no personal credit. Um, it's not because I chose, you know, a super niche game that I love and adore, and so do most of, if not all of you. Uh, but no, nay, it's the algorithm. What can I do? Nothing. I don't know why I'm on one today. I'm taking all these bits to <laughs> extreme lengths. <laughs> but who bit the moon? I'll try that one out. One of your friends recommended you that album. Now it's one of your favorites. And that's actually gone to heavy metal screamo. Nice, nice. And Twitch is a hive mind. Who bit the moon is a great album. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it out at least. All the songs in the album follow the same note progression, but played differently. It's a trip for the years. Ooh, I like the clever stuff like that for sure. I also said before that streaming is a passion project, never forget that. Oh, and I don't. Exactly. It's all tongue in cheek. I mean, at the end of the day, I hit a crossroads at one point where I was like, either I can dedicate more of my time to streaming, because I was never streaming every day. At best, like three days a week, I think was the most I streamed, and that was mid-quarantine, had nothing else pressing in my life. But I very much came to a point where I was like, I could try to stream full time, not even full time, but I could give more into the streaming thing and actually try it out for real. Or it can be this fun hobby I do on the side. And it's nice being a hobby because it lets me pursue things on stream that I'm more passionate about. Like DCSS, if I wanted to make this a career, I probably wouldn't be here right now. You know, I love the game. I love all of the community that I interact with, at least that I've seen. But it's not exactly the... Uh, the white hot crack that the algorithm wants to serve up to all of its customers. <laughs> but uh, but I do love it and I do have fun. And maybe it won't always be that case. Maybe I'll switch up. Maybe I'll stop at some point. Probably will stop at some point. I would hope so. Oh God, if I'm doing this until my deathbed, can you imagine? 
but but it is it is for fun all said i want to stream to be productive when i want to play video games which, which is a great starting point yeah it's kind of jumped off there because now i'm only streaming dcss and i still play other video games i just don't stream them anymore though that also comes part and parcel with adult responsibilities and trying to take my life seriously and all that baloney so we'll see I want a, a recommendation. Twitch for me is a good hobby. It also opened my foot. If I want to go full time with Twitch, I already have the base. Playing video games, chatting with cool people until I die. I actually have a joke of how the retirement homes are going to be when we get there. It's going to be LAN parties every day. True. When you when you put it that way, it does sound awfully nice. It does sound awfully nice. But I do think part of that is being a, a tiny streamer, because I have this wonderful community. And I mean, this is maybe an off a nice jumping off point to in my usual fashion talk about how much i appreciate uh that all of you are here watching this i hope you're having as much fun as i am whether that be us flailing about within the game or you know taking this however many minute tangent through through life and uh and everything i guess 42 and all that but uh where was this going <laughs> Uh, yes, I think that's a benefit of having a wonderful small community and it would be so much harder. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine having like thousands of people, each of them with their own brain and thoughts. I, I'm good with just my like 10, 20 people, if that, that's great. At some point I'm one of the people that say sorry too much. I should have had the gumption to realize, hey, people come back here every week. Oh no, but that's a core part of my identity. I feel like I've been pushing and I've been working on it. The version of me you see before me in terms of that specific trait, saying sorry too much, is years and years of work that have gained a lot of progress. I've come a long way there. But again, that's with the caveat that it was a rough start. <laughs> I was definitely, um, I'd say a pushover. I'd say definitely. That aptly describes me. Pushover, very chameleon-esque. So I still am some of those things. I've taken what I like, because I think there's a lot of good that can come from that. And I think that that's something I try to apply everywhere in life. It's like, you know, a lot of what we've been talking about the last few minutes here. I steal all the good bits. So I like to take the good traits, and I like to keep those. And then try to progress and move on from there. And this, I've gone to a point where I'm okay in terms of my self-actualization, I guess. I don't know. It always feels weird even talking about this stuff. I think one of the big examples there, it's a bit more tangible than me just wave, like handy wave. Handy wave. I don't think that's the word I'm going for. Hand wavy. There we go. Uh, blurb I'm going on right now. But it came up when doing... Um, like mock interviews and stuff like that, where it really got me in the vein or the, the train of thought of like, how do you talk yourself up? Because that's very antithetical to who I am on many levels. Like on stream, I like to joke. I mean, one of my biggest sources of humor is to either go fully self-deprecating or fully self-endorsing, um, I guess. And that's fun, but when you have to do that seriously and you have to talk yourself up, that is a weird feeling. And something that I think is good to practice and I think is important that you know, you know, learn how to talk about your strengths. I do still caveat that language a bit too much. I think I'll say things like, I'm really confident in my abilities as a coder, but I know that I'm still new to this. But I do believe I'm an asset to development teams and company and, you know, stuff like that. So, still working on it, but hey, we'll see how it goes. I got a whole lifetime ahead of me to figure that stuff out. Find some kind of fun balance. But like you, that's where I found that I can highly articulate my feelings. People will understand me, even if they are a, a troll wheel in a club. It's a skill, charisma over 9,000. And hey, this is why politicians write speeches. You know, it's not all just off the dome. They don't rant like this. They don't go on these whole little diatribe speeches that are completely off the rails and tangential to what they're normally going for. Is that not something that we all do every day, all the time? But, or they hire speech writers, stand my ground, don't have an ego, it's a balance. As most things in life, it is a balance for sure. And again, that's where I like to steal the good bits. Find that balance that works for you, that works for me, and all that good stuff. 
Anyway, I'm worried that I'm being... I was about to caveat it. Screw it. Let's just say that was the, the wisest thing that anyone has ever said. Or is that too far in the other direction? And now it becomes obvious that I'm being a bit satirical with it. Who knows? A balance that I've yet to find. Still working on it, but we'll get there. Regardless, I think I will stop blabbing my way to the ends of time. And, and this is where we'll call it. Got a little bit of the heebie-jeebies out from those unfortunate ends to runs. Oh, one day, Lucy, we'll be back and it will we'll be able to land that plane, go to the finish line. Wow, after so much talk and being able to fluidly go through different thought uh, patterns, I've completely fumbled on it at the end here and I'm losing my, my mental traction on my own ability to cohesively string together words, but that's fine. It's a, and regardless what it all boils down to is that again, appreciate all of you for coming on by. You know, if you're chatting alongside us here on the side, lurking in the background, or hey, if you're watching this down the road on VOD or on YouTube, now that I'm back to uploading there, heck yeah, also a thousand sub subscribers now, which again, based on the idea that I decided that this was kind of going to be my own fun thing and I do it for me and for the, you know, maybe 20, max 100 people who who find me and enjoy this content or tolerate it, uh, it's pretty awesome. Don't know if I'll do with anything, uh, do anything special for that, though. I'd kind of like to every once in a while throw in a weird higher production value thing. No, no promises, though. We'll see where my life takes me over the next few weeks here. I'm still kind of in the chaotic tumble of uh, sorting things out. But <laughs> all that from the sentence, it's back on YouTube. Heck yeah. Regardless, huge thanks to all of you. I hope you enjoy every aspect or at least some aspects of these streams as much as I enjoy putting them on. And yeah, that's where we'll leave off here. Potentially jumping back in. We never did even worship Rue in any of our starts. So, uh, so we'll have to try that out potentially next Sunday, but hey, if we have all week to think about it and all that good stuff, it's a good balance. I feel like I'm thinking too much and I'm already on the route I want to be as far as being too full of my own ego, continuing forward. One thing you've told yourself is if you're actually worried about being an ass, you're always gonna, excuse me, self-check yourself. That's being human, true. And part of being a, you know, a progressive person, not in a political way, but more so, in a adaptive like you're constantly learning and your brain should change as you grow should ideally change for way in the better whatever that better may be on a, in an objective standpoint or from an objective standpoint but at the very least you should always grow and so i do think it's important to question and i won't always be thinking about it you get some credit for thinking about it more credit if you actually try and put that towards actionable change obviously but but very true Something to grow. I started my Wednesdays, maybe tiny baby steps. We'll see. My YouTube brought uh, you to my stream. Think about that. True. You and, and many others, which I do. I mean, I appreciate all of you for, for making that jump in the first place. Could have easily been just another video served up by the algorithm and, and thrown by the wayside. So somehow we ended up here together. And isn't that nice? Look at us. Who would have thought? And all that good stuff. But yes, I could definitely wax poetically about uh, my philosophies on on growth and my experience on this planet but maybe we'll save that for another day maybe when i'm rich and famous as as i assuredly will be uh i can do a QA and a session or something like that an ama and we'll see where that leads but but thank you for these talks boss i do appreciate it a very easy going pace if i want to wrap it up already built the foundation yeah we'll see we'll see what the the world holds we'll hear, see what my life holds and we'll see what all of our lives holds uh next sunday i guess and this is where we'll leave it off of course as usual we will do a quick check to see who's live at the moment here and who can send a raid off to maybe if my laptop decides to cooperate maybe that's why i'm so on one today maybe i was just in a philosophical mood and uh and I've just wanted to blur my way through or rant my way through this entire time. Is Wizard on? Yeah, oh, I'll definitely send the raid. Wizard's wait. That's... Spoiler alert, when I say I'm going to check if someone's live, I'm usually checking 
for specific people. Wizard is one of them. Just, I mean, because they're a great streamer, first and foremost, let's make sure that is clear and distinct. Uh, but also because you're all here for DCSS, if you're watching me play DCSS, or at least a large portion of you. So I like to keep within that if I can, and Wizard is always a good source for that. Um, but then I, of course, have some of my favorites that I always like to, to, or rather not like to, but I just hope are on because I like to either pay them back for some amount of community and, and trust and respect they've sent my way, or because I really enjoy their content, though I don't really, don't really consume Twitch content. I don't know why. It's definitely up my alley. I like live content. I like interacting, but anywho, we will probably go to Wizard. I'll, uh save you all my continued rambling here and we can get that started i want to keep it relaxed how it is it's still a good thing that it's a positive outlet for me exactly however it ends up it'll be great even when i don't feel like streaming usually when i get on i have a good time and hey if i ever don't really don't want to i just don't have to we're all free-willed individuals with our own volition all that good stuff Anywho, let us start the raid here before I get off into another tangent. It's not even that tangential. I guess it's all been at least relatively thematic for the last while, but very rambly. Again, if you ever ask yourself, will this Terensky ever shut up? Answer is probably no, folks. Probably no. But we'll send that raid over to Wizard. <laughs> Show some some cool people, chestnut checkers. True, true. Same like you joined a DCSS team last year. Crap the bed, life things happen. You stop playing. We already know that you really pop on, but it's like old friends pick off where they left off. Exactly, and that's that's a place I like to be. That's a space I like to operate in because it's nice to have a little bit of you know no strings attached. Just hope you have a good time. Hope I don't talk your ear off too much, or if I do, that you for some reason for some strange. Uh, strange reason you enjoy me uh, ranting and rambling to the ends of the earth, then uh, then that's enough, and that's awesome. But anyway, regardless of all that, I do hope that you're having a great morning, afternoon, evening, whatever time it is for you, and I definitely hope to see you next time, probably next Sunday. We'll see how it goes. Just remember, folks, who never, even for a moment, didn't have it. I'll see you.